Listening to Heart of Mind Radio, and this is the Progressive Radio Network. My name is Catherine Davis. On today's program, we're actually going to be talking about and focusing on the power of heart consciousness. And I have a number of segments I'm going to share with you as part of this program. One of them is an excerpt from a presentation that I offered in 2014 in which I reflected on the teachings of Arabic poets Ibn Arabi and Rumi. And in our second segment, I'm going to be sharing with you a really wonderful and powerful meditation called Infinity Meditation, which is focused on the heart. So we'll be hearing that as we go through the program. But just to have an understanding of where I'm coming from, I want to tell you a little bit about these poets and philosophers. Muyahideen ibn Arabi was a mystic, philosopher, poet, and sage, and one of the world's great spiritual teachers. He was born in Mercia al-Andalus in 1165, and his writings had an immense impact throughout the Islamic world and beyond. The universal ideas underlying his thought are of immediate relevance today. So we're going to be talking and looking at these teachings. And the other person that I am I really connect with is Julahuddin Rumi, who lived from 1207 to 1273. And he was one of the greatest mystic and mystic poets known to history. His influence throughout the Islamic world for over 700 years and more recently in Western countries is really astounding. And love is the essence of Rumi. Love became his very being, love the impetus for all his poetry. And he is often quoted in many writings, including the writings of St. Kirpal Singh, who referred to Rumi as a great saint. And it's interesting to have a look at Sufism and come to an understanding as a source of looking at what is what this power is, what these teachings are of Sufism. And really essentially it is the esoteric branch of the Islamic faith. And Ibn Arabi has at the center of his work the heart. And there's a secret power. The creative power of the heart is called al Hima. The secret hidden power of the heart is a secret force or energy which comprehends divine realities and spiritual knowledge. The form of God is reflected as in a mirror in the heart of the human being when it undergoes unveiling. And this is a power creative force that includes the intention and desires of the heart. And Alhima is a spiritual quality of the heart and intention of the soul so powerful that it has the ability 
to engender into existence that which was only a possibility amongst the infinite possibilities of unmanifest beings. So this is a powerful part of this particular tradition. I'm not personally a Sufi. I don't follow this tradition. But I do feel a kindredness to the material that I've been researching on Sufism. And I wanted to give those of you who are tuned in an opportunity to flow down that path and see how well it relates to your understanding of heart consciousness and if it can give you some insights on how you can yourself move into a state of deeper creativity and connection through the heart. And I actually have three documents. One is called The Secret Meaning of Sufism, And it goes through the various lessons on Sufism, including key Sufi principles. Um, It has direct spiritual experience, spiritual organs, the three souls, the five pillars, and Sufi lifestyle, the path, the veils. um, And it goes into devotion, spiritual mastery. And so it it has 18 chapters. I'm not going to read through them all. But this is a document that I have found to be extremely inspiring. And so I've decided I have it as a PDF. After the program, if you would like to have a copy of this document, I'll tell you how you can get that as we move through this program. Another document I have to share with you is called The Role of the Heart in Ibn Arabi's Doctrine. And this really goes into the principles of the heart. And in it it says, The heart is the quality within human nature which transforms spiritual potentiality into reality. So it really... These documents are really speaking to the power of coming into awareness of your heart and allowing to make that deeper connection through the heart. And I have found that I um, have followed along this path rather intuitively, but it's good to see that it is also reflected in these teachings of Sufism. I'm sure there are many other forms of teachings as well. But what we're going to do now is go first to an excerpt from a program that I did in 2014. It's called The Heart Is. It has a little music within it, so you'll enjoy that as well. And then we'll be back in just a few moments. Please do stay tuned. About some of the poetry and teachings of Ibn al-Arabi and his doctrine of the heart. Now, of course, um, it's significant in my work. For those of you who listen to this program, you're aware that this program is called Heart of Mind. And one of the things that I believe to be the most significant aspect of our connection to our inner world is that connection that we can make through our hearts. Our hearts according to Ibn Arabi, is the organ of comprehension. The heart plays a crucial role in the spiritual actualization of the individual human soul. This is the organ that comprehends true knowledge, receives and accepts the truth of intuition, achieves gnosis of God, and perceives the divine mysteries. Discussing the qualities of people who reject divine guidance, the Quran states, they have hearts with which they understand not. And I think that that is probably true, um, whether one um, reads the Quran or not. It seems to be a universal truth. It is essential to realize that the heart mentioned here is not the physical organ of flesh found under the ribs. Even though there is a certain connection, the reality of which is known only to the adept. The belief in a special, to use Corbin's words, physiology has been given utmost importance by the mystics of all times, such as the belief in the prayer of the heart. 
According to this subtle psychology, the mystic's subtle body is composed of psycho-spiritual organs or centers which need to be distinguished from the concrete physical organs. For Ibn al-Arabi, the heart is one of the most important centers of this subtle physiology. And this concept is of the function of the heart as the eye with which the mystic has a vision of the divine form. The heart is the quality within human nature which transforms spiritual potentiality into reality. The heart is able to perceive into the depth of sensory perceptions such as sight and sound. When it performs its proper function, it is able to distinguish between reality and illusion, right and wrong, and truth and falsehood. If the heart is not functioning properly, even the sensory organs start to lose their true functions. The heart's role is an extension of the functions of the sensory capacities to a higher level of functioning. Peoples whose hearts are locked towards divine guidance are described in the Quran as they have hearts with which they understand not, eyes with which they see not, ears with which they do not hear. So essentially it's saying locked towards divine guidance. So this is referring to people whose hearts are closed to divine guidance. The Quran mentions the perceptions of seeing and hearing most often. It is these perceptions that become dulled because the heart is not alive to their inner meaning. Evidence is given in the Quran of how a person in such a condition has mere sensations devoid of their true and wholesome worth. As to those who reject faith, it is the same to them whether you warn them or do not warn them. They will not believe. The present and future generations who inherit wealth and power are warned that if they reject and rebel against the guidance of Allah, then we could punish them too for their sins and seal up their hearts so that they could not hear. Which is actually a very interesting concept. And it's interesting because it's very similar to one of the concepts that I, I learned about when I was studying with um, the, the Dogon uh, School, the Earth Center, which I'm no longer studying with. But um, they had a concept of the Earth's energy being closed from one, where a person would no longer be receiving that guidance and that life force, though there was no judgment in this practice of understanding, it was just that this is something that could happen to a human being, which is kind of interesting, because we, it seems to me, live in a society, in a culture in which it is fostered, it is encouraged, in which everything works towards cutting people off from their own heart and in so doing I believe cutting people off from their connection to their essence of their being and to their divine guidance. Here's something um, that was written, let's see, um, who is here and what there? Who is here is what is there. He who is universal is particular, and he who is particular is universal. There is but one essence, the light of the essence being, also darkness. He who heeds these words will not fall into confusion. In truth, only he knows what we say, who is possessed of spiritual power. Hmm, this is a verse in the Quran, apparently. 
It's interesting. I'm, I certainly don't, um, I'm not very familiar with the Quran. I'm not very familiar with the poetry of Ibn Arabi, but I'm fascinated by this state of being in communion and in translating and understanding the divine words of the Creator. And this is what the poets Rumi and Ibn Arabi have been known to do. I'm going to share with you now a piece of music which is in the same theme. And it's from a CD called Vision to the Spirit of Rumi. And this particular piece I'm going to play for you is called The Great Mystery. It's short, but it really does give you a sense of what this mystical poetry is like. particular uh, form of music, Vision to the Spirit of Rumi. The truth has declared. And I am not in some fashion I'm bringing all of this up because it's really what I've been uh, focusing on for the last several weeks, several months, but even more intensely as time goes on, really connecting and meditating into my heart space because I find that that is where we can connect to that part of our being that has the most and deepest connection to the all of existence, that has that connection to nature, that has a connection to each other. And it allows us to experience this connection in a way that is um, protected from the complications of our mind. You know, our mind is a wonderful and beautiful thing, but it tends to create complications in our lives because it brings a certain level of judgment into what we do, into what we think, into how we feel about ourselves. So I'm finding that it is a very useful meditation to sort of retreat out of the mind, out of the brain, and actually bring your awareness into your chest and feeling what's happening inside of your chest. Does your chest feel tight? Does your chest feel achy? Do you have a constricted breath? And as we bring our awareness into our chest and we begin to recognize what's happening on a physical level inside of our chest, it'll give us some connection to whether or not we're connected to the wisdom of our heart or whether or not we're blocked from the wisdom of our heart. And it's always important that we, after sort of just traveling into the chest region with our awareness and assessing the situation and then begin to to sort of breathe into that space to gradually open up that space with each breath taking a deeper breath 
trying to open the musculature of your chest, of your back, of the sides, moving your body, opening and breathing and opening and breathing. And as you begin to do that, you'll find yourself becoming aware of other tension that's in your body, maybe your back, your shoulders. And so, again, you have to move and breathe into those regions of your body so that you can release some of that built-up tension that that you're holding and it's causing your body to constrict and it reduces the space, the heart space, and cuts one off from the flow of life force. And the life force energy flows through our body. It flows from the earth, it flows from the cosmos. We live in a planetary system that is designed to sustain us physically and spiritually. And when our bodies become tight and tense, we're cut off from that. So it's important that we take the time to breathe, to move, to allow our bodies to find some relief from the mental thoughts that would badger us and batter us and create feelings of failure and distrust and feelings of suspicion and fear. The mind has a tendency to do this because well, I don't know why, but that's what it has a tendency to do. And so if we can take our awareness out of that space for a time and bring our awareness into the chest, that allows us to connect to the wisdom of our heart, which actually has a different message. And the wisdom of your heart is going to be flowing into your body, giving you a sense of belonging, giving you a sense of openness, giving you a sense of possibility, connecting you to the creative flow within your body. While it might be the mind who works out the creation or the mind that is moving your body and moving your thoughts, it's the heart that gives you the actual inspiration to allow you to move through and create within your life. So it's just really important to open into that that space, that universal space of heart that is capable of holding your presence in a place of welcoming comfort so that we can begin to regard our being as being something of the light, as being something of the source creation, and not just an automatron walking through this world trying to control everything that's in our environment. So it, it opens you up into a really, a very different possibility, into a very different potential. And I just f am discovering that it's breathing into the heart and meditating into the heart space and really just sort of residing there over time, if you give yourself enough time with that, you'll begin to really see a change within yourself. You'll begin to see a relaxation from within yourself. And it, it's a very healing um, space. And that was an excerpt from a program that I broadcast two or so years ago, two years ago more or less, and it's interesting that as I have been going through some of my archives, and I've been doing this program, Heart of Mine, in different forms in different places for maybe 14, 15 years, and I have witnessed within myself a certain journey where in the early stages of this process of learning to meditate and going into the heart center and making myself more at ease in that part of my being. And I have realized over many years how much this space and how much I have been able to cultivate this reality within myself. Now, the reason I speak of it is because it's a reality for every human being. What Ibn Arabi and Rumi are teaching through their work is that this is a part of our being that connects us to our source, our spiritual source. And it is a practice that mystics and Gnostics have been doing 
sense apparently very early in time and the basic principle of Gnosticism and Sufism and many of the esoteric teachings is that we become um, knowing of the presence of divine oneness um, through this meditation of the heart and through truly opening into a loving experience with the creative force. And as we move into that loving experience, and Rumi wrote many, many love poems uh, written from him as a living being to the divine flow, to the divine source and the creator. And according to the teachings, when we engage in this process of moving into a loving expression for the creative force, then that love is returned. And when that love is returned, it is an answer that goes beyond thought and moves into the realm of experience in which it's something that is deeply felt, it's tasted, it's, it can be heard, you can, you can smell it even. It's just a, a real um, union in embodiment with the divine force. And these teachings allow us to move into the fulfillment of that promise of having a divine spark within. It's not just a divine spark sitting there. It is a opportunity for us to open into that divinity and have a shared experience. And it can be a very uplifting and beautiful and healing experience that will expand who we are as beings. And when we begin to live through the heart space, we are in constant communication with that divine source, however we might think of it. So it's a beautiful practice to move into the heart and into heart consciousness. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, I will share a little bit more with you, including part of a meditation, a significant part of a meditation that you'll be able to enjoy. So stay tuned.
Welcome back. Welcome back. You're listening to Heart of Mind Radio. I'm Katherine Davis, and this is PRN.FM, the Progressive Radio Network. And we have been looking at and really contemplating the importance, the power, and the potential of our own heart consciousness, what we can do and how we can awaken within ourselves this great potential. And I wanted to share with you a little piece I wrote for a journal, um, a blog, I should say. Uh, but it's it really is not so much the present place that I find myself. It's more about the the journey of getting to this space. And I call it Fade to Gray. All of my life, I have lived in the margins, not quite fitting in with societal trends and values. For decades, I sat on the sidelines watching people marry, have children, climb the social and economic ladders of life as they relaxed with their ball games, picnics, and kitchen table gossip. But I was never able to fit in, so I meandered about in a state of moody discontent, thinking that there was something fundamentally wrong with my way of experiencing life. At pivotal points of intersection, I found friends and allies on the path of dysfunction and began to take pride in being an outsider, even a revolutionary, railing and protesting the inequities of our times, women's rights, anti-war, and social justice became my rallying call. This life became the source of great personal pride and kinship with those who resonated to these movements. But in the end, these relationships proved to be paper thin based on projection and affirmation of selfhood. There was little below the surface to sustain and nourish my soul. I sank into the dark night of misery once again, feeling lost in a competitive world. I dropped out and settled for low-intensity employment, shallow friendships, and took to soft drugs and booze to soften the sharp edges of my internal confusion. Never could I muster the courage to jump into the game that I witnessed all around me. This behavior, proving to be less than satisfying, I found myself sinking into spiritual considerations and became a solitary creature once more. I found my passion in seeking, looking into the lost books and myriad cultural teachings, taking insights from sages and purported masters of ancient mysteries, and spiritual truths. I learned a lot, but finally realized that what I gained was a lot of information, which in itself did not equal wisdom or any level of mastery within my own life. But I had come to realize that self-mastery was what I truly desired and needed. So I let go of seeking and began to listen to the voices of discontent that rose from unknown places inside my being. And I began to surrender to the unraveling path inspired by those voices. To my salvation, the unraveling became the source point for making peace with myself allowing me to finally let go of worldly things. As I grow deeper into my true compass, I watch it all, all that I knew to be, fade away into pale gray. The insights, 
feelings, and experiences I've gathered are still there as a resource to draw upon, but I no longer live in them. I live in the world of now and weave a fresh existence that comes from being in harmony with my soul's deepest desires. And I wrote this on the 22nd of June, just a couple of days ago. And really what this piece represents for me is that journey and that searching and that seeking that I have engaged in for most of my life, I would say, has most recently really flowered and blossomed into a deeper sense of knowing, not so much knowing myself, but knowing that deep connection to the soul, the spirit, the divine force within. And as I went through the creation of this program, Heart of Mind Radio, Heart of Mind, I was doing a parallel search and exploration in my own life. And by studying these mystics and these teachings, they gave me great insight and motivation. But ultimately, I found that I had to turn within to reach inside my own being into my own heart and sit there with that sense of intense, I suppose, devotion would be a word for it, uh, to just really search and look and listen for the divine complement, the truth of our inner being, because I say our, because I'm no different than you. Inside of you is this divine force. And when you connect to it, it gives you tremendous state of peace and relaxation and uh, an ability to, to move through the world in a, such a way that Whatever is going on, while it may be stressful, it doesn't penetrate deep into your body. It doesn't penetrate into the cellular level because you are bringing forth the flower from deep within. Coming up, I'm going to share a meditation with you. It's called the Infinity Meditation. It's a very powerful meditation that allows you to center into your heart and move that energy through your body so that you can entrain yourself, learn to be in this deep state of heart awareness. So stay tuned and we will play this meditation for you. Bring your focus into your heart and feel the energy of your heart. Bring your awareness deep into the field of your heart. With your inner sight, peer deep into your heart. to guide this energy starting flowing from the heart in a loop through your body. Visualize it flowing like a stream down through the tip of your spine and then up into your heart. Then feel this energy flow up through the Bai Hui, your crown, and then down back into your heart. And continue
continue with your intention to guide the flow of your heart's energy in the figure of an eight. Starting with the center, guide your energy to flow down in a loop, flowing through the tip of your spine and up back to the center of your heart. Guide your energy up, flowing in a loop, flowing through the Bai Hui, your crown, and then back again to the center of your heart. Continue for a few moments to watch this flow in the figure eight, which represents the symbol of infinity flowing down through the tip of your spine, looping back to the heart, flowing up, passing through the Bai Hui, your crown, and then back into the center of your heart. you to add your breath to the movement of your energy as it flows in the infinity symbol, bringing your focus to the center of your heart. As you exhale, send your energy down in a loop through the tip of your spine, returning to your heart. The full loop occurs with the exhale. So exhale, sending the energy down, looping through the tip of your spine and up through the heart with that full movement occurring as one exhaled breath. And so for a few moments, continue with the infinity symbol but focusing on the exhaled breath accompanying the energy as it flows down and returns to your heart. Bringing your focus back to the center of your heart, I want you to inhale as you guide your energy up flowing through your Bai Hui, the crown, and returning to the center of your heart. So continue with the infinity breath, but focus on the inhale, rising from your heart, flowing in a loop through the Bai Hui, your crown, and returning to the center of your heart. So continue with the full infinity, moving the chi, but focus on the inhale as you guide your chi up, looping through the Bai Hui, your crown, returning to your heart. Focus on that inhaled loop for a few moments. Focus to the full movement, returning your focus first to the center of your heart, and exhale, guiding the energy down in a loop, flowing through the tip of your spine, returning to the center of your heart, all as one exhaled breath, inhale, Guiding the flow of energy up, looping through the Bai Hui, your crown, and returning to the center of your heart. So that as you exhale, the loop is completed with the exhaled breath down into the heart. And when you inhale, the loop is completed with 
the inhaled breath up to the by way of crown and looping back to the center of your heart. So focus on the full breath for a few moments accompanied with the movement of energy. Exhale, down, loop to the center of your heart. of your heart and continue for a few moments focusing on the infinity breath as it flows through your body emanating from the heart encompassing the tip of your spine and the exhale down loop encompassing the by way your crown and the inhale of the up loop Continue this breath for a few moments. Now we're going to extend the dimensions of this breath. that is the end of our excerpt. We won't be extending it here because it's a 20-minute meditation and probably best done in a space where you can be quiet and focused to do the whole breath. And essentially, this meditation is designed to teach the breath. So it starts out with Uh, taking you through a relaxation and then it guides you in how to move your breath along with the energy through your heart in through your body and then as the meditation continues you extend beyond your body and you're breathing through the center of the planet Karagaya back into your heart and then you're connecting and breathing into the center of our universe and then back into your heart. So it's a meditation that allows you to do a very heart-centered breathing practice and also allows you to bring that heart energy into your full body, the full system of the body, and then you expand to include and bring in the resource and inspiration from the planet and cosmos. It's a beautiful meditation and very powerful when done. Once you've learned to do it, you don't need to be guided and you can do it on your own. So for those of you who would like to have a copy of this meditation, you can have, I'm making it available for free. It's a 20-minute mp3 file and you can receive it by sending an email to me at heartofmindradio at gmail.com and I'll send to you the whole meditation and that should uh, be something that you can work with as you work towards activating your own heart energy. As well, if you go to the website prn.fm and search out the Heart of Mind radio page. On the program description, I am leaving for you a number of web links that you can go to and do some of your own research. One is to the Ibn Arabi Society to learn more about the work of Ibn Arabi. And, and also a page on um, Rumi uh, at poets.org. The link will be right there. And I am also including an actual link to the download page for three documents on that go more deeply into these teachings for those of you who wish to explore. I do still research and explore. I enjoy it immensely. I don't, however, find that I require just the research. For me, the meditation plays a major role 
in reaching a state of um, real knowing about that heart consciousness. There's a level of research that helps on an intellectual level, gives you the insights, and then the next stage is to go deeper within your own being to explore self-knowledge and that connection to source that we all have. So the documents that will be linked on the Heart of Mind radio archive page at prn.fm, you can go there. You can always download the show and um, or forward it to someone you feel might enjoy. And the three documents you'll be able to get are The Role of the Heart, in Ibn Arabi's Doctrine, and that's a 10-page PDF document. Another document that I am, that's there, is The Secret Meaning of Rumi's Spiritual Lessons on Sufism, and that's a really powerful document. It's actually 78 pages long. It has 18 chapters on really understanding the secret meanings of Sufism um, as it is taught. Uh, and it's interesting. I think you will enjoy it for the most part. And the third document is called, it's a document on Rumi and Hafiz, which is a third Sufi poet and philosopher. And you'll be able to benefit from that by going to the prn.fm website, look up the Heart of Mind radio page, and it's right there for you to download. If you would like the full meditation, just drop me an email, and I'm happy to send you that MP3 file of the meditation. I have it here in my computer, and I'll send it right out to you. For those of you who would like to... Um, do something on a more personal basis with regard to meditation and integrating the mind, body, and spirit, I invite you to join me for an ongoing series on quantum qigong. Qigong is a graceful interplay of breath, meditation, movement, designed to cultivate inner peace and activate your innate healing capacity. It's on Saturdays one hour from 3 p.m. and we will be continuing. You can drop in for a single class or you can uh, register for four classes. And Studio Maya is in Brooklyn, 603 Bergen Street in Brooklyn, 11238. And that's between Carlton and Vanderbilt Avenues. It's $20 a class. A four-class series is $6. And for those who would like to take the class and need to negotiate that's fine. We always work with you wherever you are. Take good care. Have a good week. And stay tuned for more great programming here over the Progressive Radio Network, prn.fm. And check out the archive page at prn.fm for your free downloads and for your audio meditation. Bye for now.